Albert Einstein initially dismissed it as utter nonsense. But after researchers uncovered more and more evidence about 100 years ago that the universe is not a static, unchanging entity, even the creator of the theory of relativity had to admit that he was wrong. The discovery of cosmic expansion is inextricably linked with the name Edwin Hubble to this day. No wonder, since the young U.S. astronomer was the first to recognize the true nature of a strangely flickering distant star and prove that the Milky Way is not the only galaxy in the cosmos. Ultimately, Hubble's revolutionary findings thus also paved the way for the Big Bang Theory. And yet, this is only one side of the astronomical coin, because the truth also includes the fact that the expansion of the universe is still overshadowed by huge question marks and that it sometimes presents the experts with unsolvable problems. There are some things that are simply part of the basics of astronomy. According to established doctrine, the universe was created about 13.8 billion years ago in the much-cited Big Bang, and it has been expanding relentlessly ever since its birth. But if we turn back the wheel of time a good 100 years, or more precisely to the year 1917, we see that even the greatest luminaries of physics in history once held a very different view of the world. In fact, a certain Albert Einstein was initially firmly convinced that the cosmos neither expands nor collapses, but rather embodies an entirely static construct. A literal beginning of everything seemed simply inconceivable to Einstein. And so it came about that he even expanded his field equations to include a cosmological constant after initial doubts about his work suggested that the universe cannot remain rigid and unchanging forever. And while some experts adopted Einstein's constant into their calculations, the astronomical revolution had long since begun at the other end of the world. The aspiring astronomer Vesto Slipher of the Lowell University in Flagstaff, Arizona, devoted himself to the task of understanding the movements of the mysterious spiral nebulae. In the course of this, Slipher also considered a possibility that was in stark contrast to the ideas of his colleagues. Could it not be that the mysterious formations are structures that lie outside the Milky Way? Why this assumption seemed unusual, even cautiously formulated, becomes clear to us when we consider that at that time, the Milky Way was thought to be the only galaxy in the entire universe. But as we now know, the observations by Slipher and his colleagues were to shed a completely new light on our cosmological worldview. And that is meant quite literally. After all, even the astronomers of the early 20th century knew that the light spectrum of an object reveals whether and at what speed it's moving toward or away from us. For example, if a star is heading towards us, its electromagnetic waves are slightly compressed and its light spectrum is shifted towards the short wavelength blue end of the spectrum. If, on the other hand, a star moves away from us, its radiation is stretched and as a result, red shifted. The catch, however, is that we need to know the original light spectrum of the star in order to understand how much it has been shifted into the red or blue. And indeed, Slipher managed to develop a solution to this complication based on the discoveries of Joseph von Fraunhofer, Robert Bunsen, and Gustav Kirchhoff. The spectrum of light contains not only spectral lines, but also dark lines that originate from elements that absorb the corresponding part of the radiation spectrum. And since it was known at which wavelengths the lines usually occur, Slipher recognized in them a fundamental key to the spectral shift of celestial objects. And so, with this in mind, the astronomer carried out initial investigations using a spectrograph installed on a telescope, taking a closer look at the Andromeda Nebula M31, without knowing, however, that he had just caught a glimpse of our neighboring galaxy. How Edwin Hubble Shook Up the Astronomical World Despite all this, Slipher was able to uncover some basic characteristics of these spiral nebulae. For example, we now knew that they appear to rotate on their own axis, and that M31 is moving towards us at a speed of 300 kilometers per second. In detail, however, the Andromeda Nebula also broke the pattern observed by Slipher. The other nebulae examined were all supposed to be moving away from the solar system. At the time, Slipher had no idea what an extraordinary moment this discovery would prove to be for the entire field of astronomy. This only changed when a certain Edwin Hubble came on the scene soon after. 
In fact, he had been committed to the goal of finally uncovering the true nature of the mysterious nebula structures since 1990. The majority of experts saw them as objects within the Milky Way. No wonder, since as mentioned, it was considered the only galaxy in the entire universe. At the Mount Wilson Observatory in California, however, Hubble wanted to find out how far away the mysterious structures were. And in the best slifer tradition, he set his sights on the Andromeda Nebula M31. But even in the world of astronomical upheaval, the assistance of chance is sometimes required. When Hubble compared a series of photographs of the nebula in October 1923, he was surprised to notice a striking point of light that changed its brightness at regular intervals. And indeed, such flickering light sources, known to experts as Cepheid variables, are still considered outstanding reference points for determining distances in space. Even in Hubble's time, it was already known that the brighter a Cepheid variable is, the slower its rate of brightness change is. And so the recurring pulsation of these stars tells us how far away they are from us, regardless of their true brightness. In the case of the flickering star that Hubble discovered in M31, this circumstance ultimately led to a sensational result. According to his calculations, it had to be around 900,000 light years away from us. But how does it fit into the Milky Way, which is only about 100,000 light years across? Well, not at all, which is why Hubble came to the only correct, but still so revolutionary conclusion that the celestial body must be outside our galaxy. The rediscovery of the universe. And yet, this was just the beginning. As a result of further observations, Hubble discovered that the spiral nebulae had been classified incorrectly all this time, and that, just like the daughters of one's own siblings, they were by no means just any nebulae or gas clouds, but independent galaxies. And that's something we simply have to keep in mind. Edwin Hubble's findings led to the known cosmos expanding enormously in one fell swoop and to the boundaries of the universe shifting into unknown realms virtually overnight. As Hubble realized shortly afterwards, the cosmic boundaries were not the only thing that had shifted. In the period that followed, he began to determine the redshifts of the so-called island universes, and then to sort them according to distance, size, shape, and brightness. In the course of this, he again noticed a remarkable pattern. The further away a galaxy is from us, the higher its redshift. Or to put it another way, the further away a foreign star system is from us, the faster it moves away from us. It soon became clear that the relationship between redshift and distance could be described by a constant, and Hubble estimated this to be around 500 kilometers per second per megaparsec. And even though we now know that the astronomer's estimate was far too high, his findings represented nothing less than a cosmological revolution. For the first time, a researcher had recognized that the universe is expanding. But this drastic paradigm shift was not met with universal approval by the rest of the scientific community. Although the Belgian priest and physicist Georges Lemaitre had already proved that an expanding cosmos is not in contradiction to the general theory of relativity, Einstein initially clung to the idea of a static universe that had always existed. After a meeting with Hubble and the British astrophysicist Arthur Eddington, in 1931, Einstein did, however, agree to the compromise that the static universe of eternity could have begun to expand at some point. However, when it came to the cosmological constant, he clearly backtracked. He removed it from his equation and is also said to have called it the biggest donkey work of his life. It would take more than 50 years before it was proven that this constant is important despite all the donkey work. The Road to the Big Bang what did become clear much earlier, however, was that Einstein was not particularly fond of George Lemaitre. The latter had in fact postulated the expanding nature of the universe two years before Edwin Hubble, and Einstein is said to have told him in a conversation that he considered his ideas to be, and I quote, completely abominable from a physical point of view. But Lemaitre was not deterred by this harsh judgment, and he saw in Hubble's observations exactly the missing piece of the puzzle he had been looking for. Because if the universe is really expanding, then, viewed retrospectively, it must once have been much smaller, perhaps even so small that it was once compressed into a single tiny point. But that's not all. If you now use the reciprocal of the Hubble constant, you can even determine when exactly the cosmos was created. 
As already briefly mentioned, the value of around 500 kilometers per second per megaparsec determined by Hubble was much too high because it meant that the universe is just 2 billion years old. In the 1930s, however, it was already known that this simply could not be true. After all, even the Earth was significantly older, according to geological data. A few corrections to the Hubble constant and galaxy studies later, the cosmic age was at least roughly estimated to be in the right range at around 10 billion years. Today, the prevailing scientific doctrine states that the Big Bang must have occurred around 13.8 billion years ago. However, although the value for the Hubble constant seems to be clearly established on paper, in reality, it continues to pose a huge mystery. In simple terms, the universe is expanding faster than it should theoretically be able to, and we still don't have a clear explanation for this contradictory fact. What we do know, however, is the accelerated expansion of the cosmos, which came as another rude awakening for astronomers in the 1990s. Until then, the established idea was that the expansion of the universe after its early, rapid beginning had gradually slowed down. But after years of observations and data evaluations, it was clear that the exact opposite is the case. In reality, the expansion rate of the universe has increased steadily over the last 6 billion years, even though the attractive effect of the gravity of matter should have acted as a cosmic break. In order to reconcile the repeated shock to the cosmological worldview with the standard model, the experts reintroduced the cosmological constant that Einstein had banned. From a purely mathematical point of view, the problem of the speed boost was solved. But from a cosmological point of view, the question remained as to what was driving the acceleration of the expansion. In other words, there must be something counteracting gravity, and this something was finally named dark energy. But apart from the fact that it seems to be there, we don't know much about the gravitational counterpart. The physical interpretation of dark energy is largely unclear, and its existence has not yet been directly proven experimentally. What has been long proven, however, is the existence of our subscribe button. Click the thumbs up and subscribe now so you'll never miss another one of our videos. We'll see you soon.